What's up, bro? Hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to be talking about the thing that you spend a third of your life doing, no matter what you want to do, basically. And that's sleep. Sleep, you do it one third of your life. So if you have mastered this skill, then a third of your life is basically complete and in a pretty good way, in my opinion. Now, sleep is really that important. And many people are like, yeah, don't spend too much time sleeping because you don't need to just don't have enough hours in the day to get all your tasks done. And while I do agree with that in some sense, for example, if you just oversleep because you can, I think that's a waste of time, yeah. But if you just don't sleep enough, that's a different kind of story because sleep is very responsible for all the, all the actions you do every single day. Sleeping is good for motor skills, reaction speed, creativity, better physical health. You can do better workouts if you're well rested. Everything goes up. Even your hunger levels are controlled by sleep to some extent. So if you sleep less, you'll actually be more hungry, slower, more lethargic, less energized, all of those things. And you don't really want that. And you, you can... You can actually not do that because sleep has the power to change basically everything in your life for the, in your life for the better. If you sleep enough, everything is legit going to get better. But before we get into that, I actually want to tell you how sleep works because this will become pretty important later on where I explain how you, what, which practical steps you can take to just Sleeping better, basically. <laughs> and it works. sleeping is controlled by two main systems in your, in your body. All this information, or most of this information, comes from Matthew Walker and this book, Why We Sleep. While I think that there are some problems with the book, it is pretty good in general. I think it's a little bit too critical, like if it says you are going to get X disease if you don't sleep enough. I think that is, isn't a very effective way of teaching, but the information in there is very relevant. So, number one is the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is basically your, how should I say this, your exposure to the sun. If you go outside in the morning, like let's say the first hour, hour and a half, and you look at the sun, even for as much, oh, no, sorry, as little as a single minute, your circadian rhythm will activate. Now, what does this do? At a specified time, which is around 15 hours later, your circadian rhythm will trigger like, hey, that is the time when we're going to go to sleep. So as an example, I wake up at 6 a.m. every day. I go outside at 6.30. And basically every day, like at this time of year, the sun is out by that time. And when you look at the sun for not just a minute, I'm outside walking for a whole hour. Okay. And if the sun is coming directly at you and you just look at it, like not completely, of course, but if you like have it in your field of field of vision, that is enough. And the circadian rhythm will activate. And this will trigger like after your wake up time, 16 hours after that. So if you wake up at 6 a.m., your circadian rhythm will set like your sleep to around 10 p.m., maybe earlier, maybe later. I, but a good guideline is like 16 hours after that. That is the first system we have. The second system is adenosine, which our body releases. What is adenosine? You know what caffeine is, right? Caffeine, when you, t when you take it, it basically makes you awake. Adenosine is basically the opposite. Once you get out of bed, your adenosine is at a very, like, it's really low, okay? If you've rested well during the night, then your adenosine is going to start here. And the later it is, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and so on and so forth, the more you are awake, the more your adenosine is starting to accumulate in your body. This is very important because these two systems work together and they are going to make you feel sleepier after a time. So for me, for example, it's like at 9 a.m., 9.30 that I begin, that I really begin to feel like, 
bro, I need to sleep. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm in front of you. I'm in front of my computer, maybe reading, maybe writing a script, maybe just working on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, it, it's time. It's so time to go to sleep. <laughs> and these two, as I said, these two forces work together. Now, what is the perfect amount that you should actually be sleeping for best function and not wasting too much time? The best amount for sleeping is eight hours as a general guideline for every single person. Okay. This is differentiated into like night owls and early risers. This is actually like proven because it actually makes sense in an evolutionary standpoint. Night owls were the persons who went to sleep late. Okay. They were up and they were guarding the tribe in the night. Maybe there was like a night ambush, for example. So if everyone in the tribe went to sleep, there would be nobody to signal for that. And then everybody would die. Early risers are the ones that get up early and go to sleep early as well. Pretty simple, right? If you differentiate between these two, you've got the two types of people that we have today. The early risers and the night owls, okay? You can change this, as I said, by the circadian rhythm and the adenosine, uh, like the adenosine system, I'm just going to call it. But it is, to a certain extent, hardwired into you, okay? Now, why the eight hours? The eight hours are really, like, basically perfect for anyone because once you start getting less, this has been proven in studies, for example, in Matthew Walker's book, your skills in everything start to deteriorate, deteriorate, there you go, into a person that is drunk. If you sleep just six hours every single day and do that for a month, all of your skills, all of your functions, everything is going to be like a drunk person. I want you to just get that into your mind. Six hours of sleep will make you into a drunk person. That's pretty fascinating, isn't it? Because a lot of people, and I say a lot of people, sleep six hours, and some I know sleep even less. You know how detrimental that is to you? Not just like in terms of your body can't regulate every side, everything inside of you, but just your general functions, your general happiness. Bro, the biggest happiness tip that I can give you is just get enough sleep. That's how simple it is. Get eight hours of sleep. And it just kind of boggles my mind how people just neglect this that much. What can you do to just improve your sleep by a lot? As I said, eight hours of sleep. That's the best thing to do. Set aside an extra hour for going to, like, for example, waking up in the middle of the night. So nine hours of bedtime. I go to bed, I, at least I try to, at 9 a.m. Uh, sorry, not 9 a.m., 9 p.m. every single evening or night, whatever you want to call it. I can't do it every single day. Sometimes it ends up being a little later, like 9.30, but that's okay. Try to do that, though, okay? Because you may end up walk, like waking up in the night, having to go for a piss. You may end up just waking up from a nightmare. You may end up not falling asleep early, early enough in the day. And yeah, that is, uh, that is very good basic advice to start like really getting some good quality sleep. Another thing that is very important to do is to do a lot of activity in the day. So don't just get up and sit on your computer and play video games for like 10 hours a day. That is not like mentally, like maybe like somewhat mentally demanding, but it's not physically demanding. You need to go and exercise. You need to go and do some physically hard work, some psychology, some psychological hard work. You can like sit on your computer and do like three to four hours of business work. That's going to tire you out as well. But the basically like the main pretty like reasonable and safe way to tie yourself out just go and have some exercise it's not that difficult you just have to go around i don't know 50 minutes on a run go on a workout go to the gym do a workout at home i don't really mind what it is just do something to like physically exert yourself 
and actually like feel tired afterwards because that is going to make you sleep like a little baby in the, in the night. And that's basically what you want. Another thing that I do, I've already mentioned this in my past videos, is I use the like, uh, how's it called, the micropore tape and tape my mouth shut. I'll have a little video of um, me taping my mouth shut. Basically, this is going to make you sleep a lot better and your sleep will be a lot more of high quality because you can't sleep like this. I already have a video on how breathing is important. I'll have that linked in the info box. But this is a game changer because if you breathe through your nose, your sleep is automatically going to get better. And a lot of your other functions as well. Your face is going to be a lot more grateful for you <laughs> if it doesn't have to have the mouth open all the time. And it is just really damn good. Another thing that is very important is to have the room cold and have the room dark. Your environment in this is very important as well because if the room is really like, it is, if it has light shining in, for example, to like a street light, then you are going to experience that you just can't get that quiet head, sorry, that high quality sleep simply because that lantern is legit just shining on you. If you can, make the room completely dark. If you can't, make it as dark as possible. Make it like rather cold. Everything above 20 degrees Celsius, I don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit, is too much. If you can get it under that, good. If you can't, try and get it done somehow because it is really important. It has a big effect on your sleep quality as well. And last but not least, drop caffeine as much as you can. The half-life on caffeine is around six hours. So let's say you just take one gram of caffeine every single morning, okay? You drink like a coffee and it has one gram of caffeine. That one gram of caffeine, the half-life of course, means that it's gonna be like divided by half. So at three pay, if you take it at 9 a.m. at 3 p.m., it will be at 500 milligrams. At 9 p.m. in the evening, it's gonna be at 250. That's like, that's a quarter of the coffee that's still in you while you like actually want to go to sleep. And that's going to keep you, that's may, may not keep you up, mind you, but it is certainly going to improve, like deteriorate your sleep quality. And you'll probably have some of it tomorrow as well. So it will compound over time and sometimes you just won't be able to sleep anymore. So it is pretty bad. Same goes for energy drinks, which have a ton more caffeine than coffee, actually. So just avoid caffeine if possible. I know it has like these health benefits and so on, but I've never used caffeine and bro, I, just, I feel like amazing. So I don't think it's really worth it. Yeah, that is basically it. Try and sleep at the same time every single day. No matter if it's a weekday, no matter if it's a week, no matter if it's a weekend. Take the advice that I've given you. And if you fail, don't get upset about it, okay? I've got nights where I can't sleep. I'm just sitting there in bed, or lying there, better to say. I'm just lying there in bed, maybe sweating, and just can't sleep. You will have those nights. I have them too. Everybody has them. You can't do anything about that if it happens a few times. You just have to kind of take the L. And it is pretty natural if it happens. Like, look at the animal kingdom. If a predator comes by, they'll have to wake up from their nap, run away, because otherwise they're just going to die. For you, for us, it's not that big, not that big of a situation, <laughs> but we like to make an elephant out of an ant. So, yeah, that's basically it. And I hope you can take away something from this video. See you soon.